Hey guys, happy Friday. Happy Finnish Friday. I should be really excited because guess what? I'm at home. I am loving the fact that I'm gonna be able to show you how to create a couple of really fun stone finishes from my kitchen. So I am going to kind of take you through the steps. Do you love these? To be able to create these. They're so super fun, super easy. Just realizing I'll need a paring knife. And we are gonna walk you through this. So if you've never done anything like this before, your eyes are gonna be open to a whole new experience. You know, I'm all about creating great looking finishes that allow you to be able to craft a more beautiful life. And these are amazing. Hey, Kevin from Natchez. So as you pop on here, just say, hey, send me from some love. And if you don't know how we do this, if you, if you share this video, then your name goes into a drawing. And then all day Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday, as you share this video on Monday afternoon, we will select, it's through an electronic database. It goes through, and if you shared it, your name goes into the database and it pulls out a winner. And then we send you free products that I'll show you here today. So I'm gonna send the winner some free gold leaf, some free size, some free glazing liquid, and an eraser. It's a very expensive tool. We are gonna be working today to create this great looking malachite and this tiger's eye, look at this, with a very special tool that I'm gonna show you. You've probably never worked with it before, so it makes it a lot of fun. Now, let me show you this. This is a simulation of tiger's eye, and if you look at tiger's eye, it really does look a lot like it. This is a really fun malachite finish. Now, these are jewels. These are really rich stones. And when you have things like this, you wanna use them on smaller finishes. You can use them on boxes. I'll use them on tabletops. I'll do things like this on the inside panels of cocktail tables, all those type things. Look for small, very special areas that you can maybe paint or lacquer the piece and then add these elements to the inside of it. So you wouldn't necessarily do an entire piece like this, but maybe you'll paint a piece, a chest, maybe a gorgeous dark chocolate brown and do the insets like this in tiger saw. All right, so you ready? All right, let's get started. Let me show you how this works. And please be sure and share this video. And then that way your friends are gonna go, I love you so much because you share with me when Amy does these finishes and I learned so much. Thanks again too. If you were part of our Rescue, Restore, Redecorate workshop last night, we were also coming live from our kitchen. Um, it was such a treat for us. And we emailed everybody the video from last night with the overhead and detail. So that way you're able to refer back to it forever. It's yours forever to be able to use as you learn on this journey of rescuing and restoring furniture. All right, so um, I'm gonna turn this down, continue to say hey and tell me where you're watching them from, and I'm gonna take you through the process on how to create this finish. It's really cool and really fun. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna turn this down if it will behave with me. Here we go. I'm right here by my sink in my kitchen, so I'm gonna make sure that my laptop and everything is set up so that way you guys can see me. So give me just a second and let me get this set up. All right. Now, so what you wanna start with, and I've got this to where it's just a plain piece of wood. The wood is gonna be whatever, whatever surface that you're working with. So it just lets you see what it's like. Um, if you want to, you could start with um, an existing piece and you could paint it with the one step if you wanted to be able to get it down to where it's um, you're starting with a, a nice clean surface. But then you're gonna wanna come back with our size. Now, the size is a special product that is used just for gold leaf. So I've got some of this poured into a cup and I'm gonna use a sponge brush like this and I'm just gonna dip this into my size, S-I-Z-E, -E, and it's a special adhesion for gold leaf. I'm gonna apply this with the grain. You wanna make sure you overlap it. And this raw wood is gonna kinda of suck this up pretty quickly. 
If you're working on a painted surface, you're not going to have it adhere quite as much, but I'm gonna make sure that I kind of lean this to the side. I wanna make sure as I put it on, it's gonna be shiny. And I wanna lean it to the side just to be able to see that I don't miss a place because otherwise when I do, I'll have what's called a holiday, H-O-L-I-D-A-Y, holiday. So just get it everywhere like that. And then allow this to dry for about probably eight, maybe 10 minutes. And what that does, that will come to tack. Now, um, I've got my, my Michelle, my helper over here, and she has applied this. Now I want you to see, it's still kind of shiny and I can touch it usually with my ring finger. And when I touch it with my ring finger, I can feel it kind of pull it just a little bit. That way I know it's come to tack. If it's still a milky white, that means it's not come to tack. So you need to allow it to dry down to where it's not milky white anymore. It's clear, but it's shiny. So now I'm gonna take my gold leaf and I'm going to pull it out of the container. And if you've not worked with gold leaf before, there are 25 sheets in here. And it's also, it has a bind to it. That's why we call it a book, but they're not attached. They're all loose. So you see how it's not attached there. I'm gonna pull that back and I'm gonna hold this bind up like the book with my fingers. And I'm gonna lay this down like this. And as I lay it down, I'm gonna pull that tissue out and then I'm gonna burnish it really well like this. And I'm burnishing the entire book. Lift it up, look at that. So now I'm gonna take the corner of this again, I'm gonna fold that back, and then I'm gonna overlap it. Pull that tissue out, then burnish it. Look at how I overlapped it about an inch. You don't ever wanna butt them up. With your leaf, you're always gonna be overlapping. All right, so now I'm gonna lay this down again. Burnish it. The more you burnish, the prettier it's gonna be. Lay this down, okay. Look at that. Now I'm just gonna burnish this. I'm just gonna take an extra sheet of my tissue here, and I'm just gonna come back. I wanna go over the whole thing. I wanna make sure that it's burnished really well. Now I'm gonna take a chip brush, and I'm gonna go the direction that this is laying, like this. And what's gonna happen, the excess gold is going to come off. It's gonna, see how it's rolling up right here? That's very desirable. I don't wanna take my chip brush and go this direction. I could go this, go across it like this. And it's, it's very desirable to have where the, the lines of how you've actually applied it because that means that you hand gilded it. So go over it, you wanna be able to get the excess off. So that way you can go around the edges like this Get off the excess. Then when you get finished, you're gonna have a piece that looks like this. Now, here's the fun part. You're going to take our gel stain. If you've not worked with this, this is an amazing product. And I'm going to dip a sponge brush down into the gel stain, and I'm going to brush it on top of, 100% on top of my gold leaf that I just laid down. Cover it completely. This is so fun. I do wanna make sure that I get this on just a little bit thicker. Guys, as you pop on here, my name is Amy Howard, and I am with Amy Howard at Home, and I love teaching you how to do these finishes on Friday, so if you share this video, I'm gonna put your name in for drawing. We're gonna be giving away the products that I'm using here, and all you have to do is share it. Also, if you ask questions, I will answer them. 
because I love teaching you and I love raising your knowledge and your experience to where you're really, you become a finished connoisseur. All right, so now I just applied my gel stain and guess what? I'm gonna take a very expensive tool here. It's called Magic Rub Eraser. That's a joke, by the way. You can take a parry knife, you can take an X-Acto knife, and you can cut into it like this to where you're cutting into the eraser. One thing that you're gonna notice is that I want you to cut it on a bevel. Do you see how that's cut in there? On a bevel, on an angle. You don't wanna cut the top or the side straight. You're gonna lay the knife or the X-Acto knife on this edge right here. So that way it's gonna cut on both sides. So you can cut here, skip this side and come on this side. You can make another pass here and then you can also use the short side. So let me show you what I'm talking about. These are some of my tools that I've used over the years. So do you see how I've cut into that? It's almost like a comb effect. Isn't that wild? So look at these, I'll get my favorite ones and I'll rinse them out, but I'll use these over and over and over again. So I'm gonna take my tool and I'm gonna lay it at a 45 degree angle here at the top. And I'm gonna pull this down. Now, one thing you wanna be really careful of, don't pinch it to where you pull it up like this. Try to hold it nice and straight but then also hold it at a 45 degree angle. Is everybody with me? So we're gonna hold this down here on the edge and then come down and I'll bevel it just a little bit from side to side like this, like go to the right, go to the left, go to the right, and then go straight. Now, one thing you're gonna need, you wanna go all the way off and you're gonna have excess. And I want you to wipe off the excess on a rag. Is everybody with me? Let's do it again, but let's do this. Let's turn it. This side right here is gonna give me a totally different look. Isn't this fun? So now I'm gonna come back up to the top. No side is gonna be identical. Just pulling it down through that, that gel stain, be sure and go all the way off, and then clean it with your rag. Now, let's go to another side. Let's go to this side. They're all different. Try to change a side every time you do a pass. So now I'm coming here. Be sure and lay it down pretty secure. That's, gonna, that's showing a lot more gold underneath. Now I'm gonna switch over to this eraser. I'm gonna come next to it here, come at the top. Look at that. So it gives you that natural look of stone that you would see on tiger's eye. I'm gonna switch again, I'm gonna come here. Look at that. You can't mess this up if you do. You just start over. Look at that. Is that so fun? Now, one thing I wanna show you, it's gonna be very important. I want you to see the difference. Here's one without glazing and here's one with glazing. Now, I will tell you, I've actually worked on a restaurant in New York where we did these on Masonite panels and we put them up like a puzzle on the wall and they were amazing. If you wanna be able to create a great looking um, wall in your room, you could literally do masonite panels and put them up like this. The difference between this one and this one is I allow this to dry. After I allow it to dry, I come back with my bright idea and I lacquer it. I'll take my gel stain and I'll thin it with water. So you wanna take your gel stain, thin it one part water to one part gel stain, make it really nice and thin. After you've sealed it with the one step, I mean with the bright idea, and then brush over the whole thing and pat it off to where it looks like a glaze, like this. Then that way I come back 
and I put another coat of the Bright Idea on and it gives me this really pretty gloss. The reason for the high gloss on it, and that's why this is so good, is because it makes it look like a stone. Isn't that fab? It makes it look like it would actually have been a polished stone that you would have seen. Now, I don't have the time to be able to show you this today, but I wanted to be able to show you. You can do the same thing with the malachite. I may do a TikTok video or just something on Instagram to show you what this looks like, but it's the same process with the eraser. But instead of going in a downward pattern, pretty straight, I have my glaze and I move it around like this. So I'm doing circles, semicircles, and I'm creating much more of a malachite looking pattern where on the tiger's eye, it's primarily a strie. Isn't that fun? So, now, help me Hannah. This thing is going to be the end of me. So, think about now all the different surfaces that you can create by working with something as simple as this little bitty magic rub eraser. Get your X-Acto knife, get a Perry knife, cut it up, make several different patterns on it, and then that way you can use a glaze that you can make. So let's say, for instance, you don't want to use the gel stain. You can make any glaze you want with glazing liquid, one-step paint, and water, and then go on top of it and create all these amazing looks. So. I was so excited to be able to show you this. I hope that it really builds into your repertoire of learning how to do all kinds of finishes because this can really make an amazing difference on the right maybe mid-century modern piece, on an inlay, on the tabletop of a small little table that you do, maybe on a jewelry box. So many pretty things because it's all about the bragging rights and enjoying how to make your life more beautiful. Share this video, your name will go in for a drawing. Monday afternoon, we'll be giving away all the products that I showed you here today to the lucky winner. And thanks so much, everybody. Have a beautiful, beautiful weekend, and I'll see you at the estate sales. Bye.